Morning. They all gallop. Um, straightforward morning. Um, very easy. Um, Messier went out early and um, galloped around just around a mile. And um, same thing with Haley. It was just a, a normal routine gallop. Yeah. Did the trip, uh, did they come over well in terms of the flight and everything? Very well. Who's the best of the horses? Good question. We'll find out Saturday. <laughs> What was the logic to 5.30 for Messier and later for Taiba, and will you switch it tomorrow? I probably will switch it tomorrow. Um, Messier can get a little bit strong. I wanted to take him out when it was dark and quiet. What was the thought process with with uh, Messier having two works and Taiba only having one work in Southern California before coming here? Yeah, it was like I had mentioned, you know, I um, just wanted to make sure I had a, a fresh, fresh horse coming over here. How can you extra prepare a horse with only two lifetime starts, making the third start in the Kentucky Derby? That's a good question. We'll find out if I did it right or not. What'd you do? Well, you saw what I did. I gave him one work and um, we'll take it from there. Yeah. Do you worry about that part of it? I mean, he's a lightly raced, lightly trained horse. Uh, in this race, traditionally, horses have a more extensive uh, racing background? They do, but I mean, it's sort of the hand that was dealt us um, because of the way his um, career started. And um, we were fortunate enough to run him in the Santa Anita Derby and find out that he's an exceptionally gifted horse. I think we always knew that he was talented, but to take that big step forward, I think um, shed a whole new light on our, um, our journey, our campaign. And it gave us an opportunity that we probably wouldn't have been granted had we not taken him into the San Diego Derby. So he showed you there, he belonged? Yes, I think he showed everybody there, he belonged. How do you think they're gonna handle the crowds? You gonna take them over there like Thursday or Friday? We will school them, yeah. You think they'll, you think they'll do okay? I think they'll handle it just like any of the other horses. I don't think it's uh, something that anybody else has an edge on my horses over their horses because nobody has um, been granted the opportunity to um, get in front of a crowd that they're going to be expected to campaign in front of. So, Tim, what are the personalities of these two horses? Um, one's very laid back. The other one's um, got a little more juvenile to him. And, um, I wouldn't want to turn my back on him. He might tell you that he's standing back there. The first one being? The first one being messy and very laid back, and uh, the juvenile being my the younger campaign horse. Tim, what has been the process since you picked up these two horses? Just sort of, can you describe what you put into it, what you've been looking for to, to transition to your farm? You know, just like when you pick up any new horse, you know, whether you claim it, whether you get an owner transfer, or whether you do a private purchase, it's been very routine. Tim, you mentioned uh, that you're going to send this video to your sons. And they wouldn't. They wouldn't believe it. Why is that? Well, I think you'd have to st be standing here and look look out that way <laughs> to get an appreciation of what I'm looking at. Yeah. <laughs> what is this moment like for you? Very exciting. Yeah. When you got the call, I don't know how it works, but saying that you were going to get these horses in your barn, what was your reaction? Did you sort of feel? pressure and no, no pressure I felt I was I was very I was very excited honored yeah willing to take the opportunity very much so um, you know it's the pinnacle of any trainers um, career to compete in the Derby you've known Bob a long time what was the communication there just as far as handing off the horses there, there was no communication it was um, between Bob um, there was communication between the owners. Did you hesitate to take them at all, just knowing hesitate? it was going to you... put you in the eye of the storm? <laughs> put me in the eye of the storm? Yeah, I'll be honest with you. I, I didn't realize it was going to be like like this, but I would have never hesitated. No. Even no. being around Bob and Charlie in the past when they had good horses? They're, they're, you, you didn't oh, oh, yeah. No, I, I, I watched it, but there's a big difference than... Um, sitting in the second chair than sitting in the first chair. So there can be no like communication now between you and Bob at all? He doesn't no, I have not. No. Is your family coming in, your wife and son? She is. Is there any familiarity for you from having been assistant for Charlie and Bob in terms of the derby team right now? 
Familiarity? Yeah, I mean, just my experiences. Yes. Yeah, no, the, the training aspect has been very easy. Um, I think this, excuse me, this is um, something that's new to me. Did you think last night about all the questions you might get asked and how you might answer them? Um, I would definitely say I, uh, my wife had spoken to me and tried to prepare me so I didn't look as bad as I can. <laughs> she coached up a little. Hey, she tried, so you can you can tell her whether she did a good job or not. So we're going to blame Millie. <laughs> Were her questions tougher than ours? Um, no, I think they're pretty spot on. I think she's pretty good. <laughs> so she had a pretty good idea. Who were some of the bigger derby horses you were involved with when you were here in your previous trips? Um, probably Strode's Creek would have been the most accomplished one. That was with Charlie, right? That was with Charlie. Mm -hmm. So you weren't here like for Ferdinand Sunday Silence? No, those, I, I wish I was, but that was before my time. And how about with Bob? Any those derby horses? You know something? I didn't come out here with those derby horses that Bob campaign. That's he's got a cool backstory. Are you a hockey fan at all? Do you have any memories of Mark? You know, I don't, but I'm very, very honored, you know, to be associated with um, a horse like that and um, with the, the namesake, you know, I'm hoping Mark is able to come out here with us. That would be pretty cool if he joined this derby day. You know, famously in uh, 1994, he made a guarantee of victory oh, for Rangers. <laughs> Boy, <laughs> I'm a little superstitious, so I'm gonna I'm gonna refrain from moving forward on that one. Okay. Did you mention this being the pinnacle of any trainer's career to be here? And do you think you're gonna be reflecting much this week on kind of your journey here and how you how you ended up in this situation? You know, I don't think I'm gonna reflect uh, uh, back this week. I think I'll, there'll be reflection after the derby. Yeah, depending on how it goes. Yeah. Right now, I think my schedule's um, filled to where, you know, when I'm done, because I still, excuse me, um, have a barn in California that I'm trying to manage as well with my assistant. So I have a good team, but you just, you know, I'm still not just shutting myself down to three horses. Who are the exercise riders up on each horse this morning? You know, I, I bought uh, Beto um, now, so. And had he ridden a horse when he was with Bob, the horses? You know, I don't know. That's a good question. I, I can ask him, but... Because um, he was justified for an exercise. Right? Correct. Correct. With the what did you... How, kind of, how, you know, what did you see? I'm sorry? With Messi and the Sandy, kind of take us through what you saw with him when he got out of that You know, I saw a horse that, um, that just ran giant. Um, he pressured the pace for Big and Kingdom from my standpoint was going to be a very difficult horse to beat. He has sprint speed, um, showed he could carry it two turns, and if he didn't engage him early and just let him get out there on his own, I thought he might um, be very difficult to get by. And if you tried to go with him, you might compromise yourself at the end. And if you looked at the day's races, I think horses that did pressure any type of horse sort of paid the, paid the price at the end. So I thought that Messier ran a giant race in defeat. Um, he didn't run for 60 days, and it should step him forward very well. If it rains, will that impact how you train the horses in the morning? It could, depending on, on the surface, yeah. But I think Churchill does a pretty good job, so... Um, but I'll have to play that by, by here. And, um, will Ummer be getting here at any point? He will. Off? He will. Do you know what day? I think he's coming in on um, the 5th. Did, I know you didn't grow up around horses. Did you play other sports? Were you an athlete? Um, you, you, I was an athlete. I played soccer. Okay. You know, I, um, I played a lot of soccer. And, uh, did a, did a lot of running. Okay. Was that in Germany or was that? It was okay. in Germany. Yeah. Pretty serious soccer over there, right? Pretty serious yeah. soccer, yeah. Mm -hmm. Very serious. Oh, running, you mean like track and field running? Or that as well as uh, the Germany, they have other week, uh, weekend events. They're called Volksmarsches, and as a child, you get into, even as um, older, um, you get into these scenic competitions. It'd be like 10Ks, 20Ks, 50Ks. Say it's different moving from the second chair to the first chair. Is it nerve-wracking? Is it exciting? What's, what's that whole moment like? I think all of the above, but I think um, 
the opportunities that have been granted for, granted to me have made my journey a little bit easier sitting in this chair. Have you run horses at Churchill before? I have. You know, were you surprised when you learned that you were going to be the one who got these two horses? Um, I don't know if surprise was the word, but I was um, very appreciative. Yeah, we asked you on the Zoom, why you? Why were you chosen? Yeah, um, that, that's a good question. I, um, I think it just boiled down to, um, as trainers develop relationships with um, other clients and they feel comfortable, but I actually think that, you know, Tom Ryan and, um, and um, Gavin Murphy would be the two to actually ask and ammer on, on that, what their ultimate choice was there that was the deciding factor, me versus somebody else. Wayne Lucas said that the general public is going to think these are Bob's horses, even though your name is next to them for the Derby. How that make you feel? What did you think when you heard that? You know, something I, I really didn't throw a whole bunch of credence. I didn't feel one way or the other. You know, people, everybody has their own opinion, and I'm not looking to, to sway um, anybody else's um, thoughts. You know, I'm going to enjoy myself here and um, my my uh, journey. You, you work for Bob. You're friends with Bob. Has this been difficult yeah. for you to see what's going on, how this has all transpired? It is. Tim, with the Taiba being so lightly raced, are there additional considerations on where you want him to be race day or what post you might prefer him to have? Right. So I would prefer for him to draw the middle and possibly have the other speed on the inside of me. Um, so we could sort of basically not have too much pressure on the outside of us. And has, and has he taken dirt before? I'm not in races, right? So you trained him to do that or you just want to be up close? Yeah, I think Mike will position him in a spot to where he's not getting buried. I think he's tactical enough to where um, he's going to be able to position himself if we get a clean break. Obviously the break is crucial. Do you have an ideal draw from SCA? You know, I think both of my horses, I'd like to see him draw in the middle. Yeah. 